Hello, Sid Roth here, and I'm with a friend who is a well-known prophet, well-known, respected prophet. His name is Chuck Pierce. And Chuck, on October of 2018, you prophesied that we in this nation will be a swamp until January 18, 2021. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, great to see you, Sid. You are just wonderful. How you help the body of Christ keep moving is just incredible. It's just an honor to be with you. Uh, we were in Chattanooga. We were doing a big rally there. And uh, some way or another, the Lord caught me up. And he said, now, I want you to prophesy to this nation from Chattanooga. I have no idea why Chattanooga. But I, I guess if I researched enough, I would find out from the Lord. But he said to me, he said, I want you to see how this nation is going into its worst swamp season. It's going to look like a civil war up until uh, January the 18th, 2021. Now, I think that sort of culminated yesterday in some areas. I think when we look back at all we've gone through the last couple of years, we see that. Now, I grew up in East Texas, Louisiana area. I understand swamps. So that's the reason the Lord could communicate to me with that lingo, because I've had to walk through swamps. Now, to walk through a swamp means you're going to have to find your way very carefully. There's a lots of dangerous creatures. And if you make a wrong move, if you don't feel in front of you, you can go into a sinkhole and immediately and not come out. And so I began to understand that was where our nation was headed as a nation. We were headed into uh, a very dangerous season with lots of sinkholes. Yeah, yes, but you, you said uh, January 18th, 2021, uh, we're coming out of the swamp. What, uh, that's what I don't understand. Well, I think what, what, what I saw was that by January the 18th, it would be decided in America which direction she wanted to go. And uh, I believe America has made a choice uh, based upon uh, lots of legality and lots of decisions by powerful people on the way that she wants to go. I think she's coming out of a swamp. I just don't think it's the promised land we wanted. We have been on the potter's wheel, believers and non-believers alike. Totally, totally. Uh, and and uh, uh, what is God trying to form in us? I mean, with COVID, the presidential election, the divides all over America all over the world. Well, first of all, I believe that uh, for, I wrote a great book called The Passover Prophecies because I think this whole era we're in, Sid, for 10 years is a Passover era. I don't think it was last uh, uh, 2020's historical Passover, which had never happened before since the original Passover. God didn't just shut in Israel. He shut in the whole world. And I think what he did was he put us all together on a playing field to create one new man. Mm -hmm. In other words, it wasn't just the Jews this time. It was the Christians as well. And he says, I'm getting you all in the same place so I can advance you to Passover. That's what I think we start into this year. We start moving forward over the next eight years, so to speak, becoming one new man. But now nationally, that is going to create lots of upheaval. I believe when God put Trump, in, President Trump in office, he put him there to realign us with Israel. And he did that. And I, I think that's all part of us becoming one new man. And I think it's also part of us nations in the Valley of Decision. How are they going to choose his covenant plan? It says that in Zechariah. Now, here's the precarious place I believe America's in. 
Will it continue to align itself with Israel or will it now pull away as we progress toward this uh, uh, current party structure that seems to be gaining rule in America? Well, most Christians are focusing on the fact that Trump put in a couple of Supreme Court justices uh, and he, they are they would be on the right side as far as pro-life. Uh, and so it was the whole abortion issue. And that was major to God. But I've always felt the major thing to God is what just came out of your mouth. And that is our relationship with Israel. That's the ultimate thing with God. I mean, it's right there in Zacharias, right there in the Word of God. It's right there all the way through. If we do not align as a nation with Israel, we begin to fade toward uh, being a nation that is realigned with an antichrist structure. And what God showed me, and I wrote three books about it uh, in 20, uh, in 1986 was a 10 year increment of where uh, America would make choices. Uh, in that 10 year increment, the church would be making choices. Would we align with Israel? Would we become one new man? And as the church was doing that, uh, would we allow the Spirit of God to move? As the church was doing that, nations were choosing their direction. And the danger is by 2026 now in America is we look like China. Oh, that, that does not sound good. And that's the real danger of the progression, where I feel like when President Trump was in office, he was turning us toward Israel he was turning us away from China because China was already infiltrated every state we had and was beginning to control every port we had. I, I share a dream in this Passover prophecies that I had about the port structure and how we couldn't get our ship in place because China's barge had gotten in uh, our place, we had to use reverse mirroring, uh, uh, mirroring to get into place. Now, I think that's where we are right now. We are in a precarious moment of us deciding covenantally, covenantally, biblically, covenantally, are we going to follow and ask the blessings of God's covenant? to have liberty in this land, or will we pull away from God's covenant as a nation and God's people become stronger and stronger now to rise up and reflect his covenant power? Is God showing you what's going to happen? I, I really think he's shown me that we triumph, that God's people triumph. That, uh, God, that there is such a move of God coming that it shakes this nation. I don't think this nation has had its last shot at making a decision. And I don't want to, I think that's why so many prophets are, are, are encouraged to keep trying to prophesy this nation into its future. I don't think this nation has had its last shot. I think its last shot comes when there's a sweeping move of the spirit that sweeps across this land. Then people start making decisions. Uh, and if they reject that move of the spirit, I don't think that we will ever recover fully as uh, the covenant nation that God intended us to be. It's kind of interesting looking back over the last year, what I was motivated to do was even though my heart's desire is evangelism, especially Jewish evangelism, um, I felt God wanted me to do whatever I could do to help President Trump win and to get prayer for him. And, and that's what I've been doing. Uh, how, however, my heart really and truly is not just evangelism, it's to uh, mobilize the church for yes. the greatest move of God's spirit in history. And, and by the way, when it comes to prophecy, 
there was a prophet in the Old Testament. I'm telling you, you know, uh, Samuel. And, th- and there's a statement that stuck with me like the oatmeal I had today. Not one of his words fell to the ground. I believe in this new glory that is coming, we will have prophets where not one of our words will fall to the ground. I agree fully with you. I, be, I, I, I sense sometimes we get on a public platform and we have great desire to see something happen. See, I think it comes out of our function of desire and we speak before we should, before our desire gets seasoned by the spirit. You know, desire is a function of our emotion and God made us with desire. He even told woman, that's what you're going to have to war with from now on. And, and I do think that we are seasoning as a prophetic uh, a, a troop throughout the earth. I think we're being seasoned right now. I think this was part of it. I, I look, it's like when a person is so sick, you want to pray that they be healed. You want to pray that they get healed no matter what. You want to encourage them to rally against that sickness and be healed. Uh, But there comes a point you have to be careful when you say to them, you will be healed. And you have to know that God is telling them, yes, it's his will that they be healed, but you don't know that they will be able to overcome the infirmity that has crept into their body. Because he says, a man can withstand their infirmity, but who can withstand a broken spirit? So a lot of times what happens with us, we have breaks in our nation. We have breaks in covenant, God's covenant plan. And it's hard for us to fully recover, even though he would love for us to fully recover, because it's going to take a uh, a realignment of of God's people, first of all. He always starts with the house of God. Then it takes a Excuse me. Let me stop you right there. What is the realignment? What do you mean? Uh, That means, first of all, God's people have to be realigned by his spirit. We have to come. The church can't keep saying the spirit of God doesn't exist. Half of the church in America says that. We have to have a major move uh, and a realignment of the Spirit of God, which is the third person of Christ here in the earth realm. We have to realign with God's purposes. Then, because of that, a nation starts awakening. The civil government and uh, starts awakening to the, the move of God that's going on in a nation. See, the Lord warned us of two things, which I know you're well aware of that. He warned us uh, to beware of the Herodians and to beware of the Pharisees. And what happens to us, religion and politics, they've got a kindred handshake that has to be broken and only an invasion of the spirit of God through his people can do that. I have watched you, how you have walked to encourage America, to try to encourage Trump, uh, President Trump represented America turning. And I think it wasn't the man himself. It was the idea that America could turn back and be great again. I think that was everything that we that most anyone wanted to see. Now it seems like America has turned a different way. And because of that, there's no condemnation on anybody that tried to help us keep turning to become great again. There's no condemnation on anybody that wanted President Trump to remain there for years. Now our nation has chosen a different path. That's what that January 18th day looked like. We come out of a swamp, but what land will we walk in? That's the real question now. And what I'm hearing you say is this greater glory that's prophesied in Scripture, it says that it's going to come when there is great darkness. Totally. In fact, um, in, in Isaiah 60, it, it says, verse 1 to 3, let me read it in the Amplified. Arise, 
shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come, and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness will cover the peoples. But, I like that but, Chuck, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Now listen, people, to that. On you, on you, on you. That's what it says. Now, go look just a couple of verses at the end of Isaiah 59. I think it's the real key, uh, Sid, because it says when it, what it's really saying is when a generation prophesies and another generation prophesies and another generation prophesies and all three generations are aligned, arise, shine, your light will come. I see God realigning the generations of America, and we had almost lost a generation. Uh, this begs a question. People use a biblical term. You use it. I use it. One new man. Uh, I, I see many translations say one new humanity. What do you mean by one new man in reference to the realignment of generations and other things? Well, Sid, I think when Paul used that phrase over in Ephesians, he said he would break the wall down between the Jews and the Gentiles. And what I see is all of a sudden those that are in covenant, true covenant with a holy God, beginning with Israel. That's where he first came. You cannot remove Israel. That was God's prototype nation. It was his sovereign nation. It was what he has used to keep the plumb line of the world in place. And what I see that it means is there is a true covenant people throughout the nations. God showed me one time, Sid, 153 nations that would be in covenant, and those covenant people would be drawn out in such a way that they would look and be what Paul prophesied as one new man. That covenant God made, that true covenant, that he made with Israel would perpetrate through God's uh, kingdom people, and we would end up looking as one. And I believe that's where we're headed. Yes, there's going to be some chaos. Do you see this chaos in America long term? I see it start shifting uh, after the next administration gets in place. Now, I did not make that connection when I first prophesied that, because if you'll notice in the original prophecy, it said two years and four weeks. That was what God showed me when he caught me up in heaven. I had no idea that would lead to January uh, 18th, 2021. That wasn't in my paradigm when the Lord had me and was having me prophesy. Once I began to calculate it, I saw, and I don't think I did that till this at the beginning of this year, uh, of last year. I began to see, oh my gosh, that prophecy takes us up to almost inauguration day. So, mm -hmm. some way that prophecy was linked with the confusion, the swampiness, the civil unrest that would all occur up until uh, a new administration got in place. Now, I do think things start changing after January the 18th. But uh, now, for, I want to go ahead. For better or for worse? Uh, well, I think, I think it gets quieter. I don't want to say for better. I think it gets mm -hmm. quieter. Uh, because I think when by the time we get to April, New administrative uh, confines are being put in place in the administration that takes office. And I think we're going to have to watch very carefully at this Passover time. How do we keep moving forward 
as this one new man that I just explained so that we do not get controlled and end up losing our freedom and liberty to worship. And there's a real danger in that for us that our liberty to worship can be lost in days ahead. And I believe that's when, why, one of the reasons you ask about COVID, I believe God pulled us aside to reform the way we worship because he knew what, what's ahead. We have to learn to worship. We have to learn to communicate in new ways, just as you and I are communicating now. Uh, I look back when I was one of the very first to ever start a web church. That was almost 16, 17 years ago. I got so much flack from the body of Christ because they said, you can't, you can't do church on the web. And I just kept, I had to go before four or 500 leaders in a panel to explain why God was telling me to do that, because he was telling me there was a lot of sheep out there that needed to be drawn in prophetic sheep that had been run off from the traditional church. I look at this year, the only way we could worship was on the well. You know, it's beyond that. When this global glory hits we won't have church buildings large enough to hold all the people. Totally. So, and so that's that makes why, it. <laughs> that's why we had to, I, we wrote this one book called Apostolic Church Arising, Messianic Church Arising, Apostolic Church Arising, because these sinners that are out there, they're going to be filled up and no man will be able to stop them. No man will be able to stop it. So the Lord had to pull us aside to get us so planted in what he's trying to do for the future that we are ready for the next move of God. Uh, we're going to have meetings, Chuck. I want your comment on this, whether it's on the web or, or in person. We're going to have meetings where every single person is healed. The glory will just flood. Totally. Uh, and, and I mean, I've never seen this. I've heard of once in a while, something like that. But this, this is coming. I, I mean, I, I'm upset over what's going on as politically, et cetera, the divisions. Uh, I'm upset over those things. Uh, however, there's a Trump and it's not a man. It's called the spirit of the living God. The Trump is, means triumph. That's what the word means. There's a triumph God is bringing us into. See, that's why I love to listen to you. There is a triumph God's bringing us into. It's because we understand his overall covenant plan that he had with Israel. Eventually, he brings one new Jerusalem down. Eventually, Israel is the nation that people have to make their decision in all nations around. I'm telling you, we are headed into the most triumphant time we've ever been in. I started back rereading uh, Revelation in a different version just to see how it looks. We're in Revelation 5. I mean, we're coming into a place of triumph. The line of the tribe of Judah is moving. I think they're sending you a picture that you can show everybody. It looks like this, the line just roaring from heaven. And then what this year looks like is the lion roaring from heaven with fire. And we, because we're having to face off the dragon that doesn't want us to move forward these next three years, just like it says in the book of Revelation. You know, I, I have to tell you, the Holy Spirit within me just bubbles up when I hear about the line roaring. I don't even understand it. But every time I hear about the line roaring, I get excited. It's a fiery line. That's why the Lord's saying we have got to get this fire going in us again. We've got, and I think, I think I'm watching that happen. And that's why there's again no condemnation on all those that are praying, all of those that are prophesying, because it's creating a fire in the body that had been lost. We had lost, we had gotten down, we were like the fault frog in the kettle. We had just started moving, and now there's a fire coming out because we have to be fiery in days ahead because we're facing off a fiery enemy. 
Chuck, last word. What do you want people to know? There are a lot of people hurting right now. There are people even that are, their faith is shaky. Now, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Job. Even if he slay me, I'm going to worship him. I mean, that's ridiculous. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what happened. A thousand will fall on one side, 10,000 on another. It's not going to come near me. <laughs> Sid, this is what I would want people to know. If the Lord came back today, he has one question, would he find faith? Well, a lot of this, the faith of a lot of God's people have been shaken. But let me tell you something. You've got fire down in your cells. The word of God goes all the way down into your bone marrow. This is what I want you to know. He's about to breathe on you and cause that ember that's so deep down in you to light up again. The word's going to come alive again. Your bone marrow is going to come alive again. The, the, power of your voice is going to come alive again. The Lord says to you, watch me blow on your bone marrow and stir up the fire of my word in you. You know, you made that, that tremendous statement. Will you pray it over us right now? I would I'm going to receive. I don't know about anyone else, <laughs> but my mother didn't raise a stupid person. <laughs> Now, all of you that's watching out there, this is for you. You can't let this political thing overtake you. That was all of what the Lord did during the word when he was walking on earth. That's what Peter had to overcome. That's what John had to overcome. I decree right now that overcoming anointing in you is coming alive again. I decree the fire of the word that is in your bone marrow is coming alive. You're going to start thinking thoughts that you didn't you had let grow cold there is a fire coming alive in God's people and that fire is going to cause a glory to be seen on you just like Isaiah 60 says I loose that on all of us and I say go for it Lord and blow on us right now in Yeshua's name and the word amen means so be it so be it <laughs>